Design guidelines for injection molding help us to mass produce high quality, dimensionally stable plastic parts. References are readily available for specifying nominal wall thicknesses, rib heights, fillets and radii, boss dimensions, etc. These help us design parts for proper performance, but one consideration is often overlooked, the gate. The gate is an opening in the mold that allows molten plastic to flow into the mold cavity. It connects the part to the feed system. Plastic is first injected into the sprue, and then it flows through the runner until it reaches the gate, finally filling out the part. There are many different types of gates to choose from, and many different locations on the part where the gate can be placed. You may be thinking, why should I care about the gate? Isn't that the toolmaker's job? By the end of this video, you will know how the type of gate that is chosen and the gate's placement affect the quality of the parts you design, as well as the importance of communicating your ideas with the toolmaker. Mold-based types and degating methods are important considerations when choosing a gate design. A two-plate mold, which requires the gate to be along the edge of the part, is the most widely used mold-based type. Edge gates are commonly used with two-plate molds, and the drawback of an edge gate is that it needs to be manually trimmed by an operator, which adds to the cost of production. A tunnel gate will allow the gate to be placed away from the side wall, which is often a cosmetic surface, and that matters because a small vestige will be left in the gate location. The other benefit of a tunnel gate is that it's sheared off by the action of the mold opening. This automatic degating saves on labor costs but increases the mold maintenance requirement due to higher wear in the gate area. Other options for two plate molds include fan gates, tab gates, diaphragm gates, film gates, and cashew gates, among others. A three plate mold incorporates a stripper plate, which degates the part as it's being ejected. For automatic degating with a three plate mold to work, the gate must be very small so it breaks easily. Small gates can be tricky to work with because they freeze off quickly, making it difficult to pack out the part for good dimensional stability, and cosmetic issues can arise with shear sensitive materials due to the restricted flow path. The main benefit of a three plate mold is that it allows for more flexibility with the gate location than a two plate mold. The gate is no longer required to be on the edge of the part, it can now be placed on the top surface. And that leads us to the next point of today's discussion, gate placement. Gate placement will influence the part's aesthetics, shrinkage, dimensional stability, and performance due to the way the part packs out. The term packing refers to the application of pressure to the part after it fills. This is necessary because plastic shrinks quite a bit as it cools. Gating in a thick region will allow the part to pack out more thoroughly because the thick region of the part will take longer to freeze as the cold mold steel draws heat away from the molten plastic. Therefore, if a gate is in the thick region, molten plastic can convey pressure to pack out the thin region before it freezes. However, if the gate is in a thin region, it would be impossible to pack out the thick region due to the plastic near the gate freezing prematurely. For this reason, it's usually recommended to gate in the thick region of a part. Other benefits include increased flexibility for gate sizing and generally lower injection pressures, which will reduce both the energy consumption of the injection molding machine and the residual stress inside the part. Once we've identified some thick regions of the part, we'll consider weld line locations. Weld lines occur whenever two or more melt flow fronts converge. Because there's little to no mixing of polymer melt in this area, weld lines cause a localized decrease in mechanical properties as well as a cosmetic defect. Since the part will be weak in this area and its appearance is not ideal, it's important to specify structural and cosmetic areas of the part where weld lines cannot be tolerated. The use of an injection molding simulation software such as Moldflow can help identify weld line locations and allow you to try multiple gate locations before cutting steel. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at a flow analysis of a cup holder part with two different gate locations. On the left, we've got a three plate mold with a pin gate, and on the right, we've got a two plate mold with an edge gate. A balanced fill pattern is preferred because it will generally lead to a lower injection pressure and more consistent molecular or fiber orientation, which will help reduce the potential for warpage. Here, we see that the pin gate results in a much more balanced fill pattern. By watching how the part fills, we can also see how weld lines form. In both gate location scenarios, the melt flow front splits and then rejoins to form whole features. In the edge gate scenario, melt flow fronts converge at the base of the cup holder, trapping air as weld lines form. Unfortunately, it isn't easy to vent these air traps given their location in the mold, and trapped air will make these weld lines significantly weaker. 
Weld lines in the rectangular pocket features only show up when the pin gate is used. These show up because of the way the polymer flows through the thin ribs that were added to stiffen the part. This comparison allows us to understand the pros and cons of the two-plate and three-plate mold base options beyond just the cost and maintenance requirements. This allows us to determine which gating option will result in a higher quality part and helps the toolmaker build a mold that meets our specifications. So, to answer the question of why a product designer should care about the gate design and gate location, we now know that if the gate design and gate location aren't correct for a part, the result can be a dimensionally unstable part with poor cosmetics and poorly placed weld lines that negatively affect its performance. By understanding the basics of gate design and placement, you can design higher quality, more robust plastic parts. For this reason, plastic parts should be designed with gating in mind and possible gate locations should be communicated with the toolmaker. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button to let us know and comment below with any questions or topics you'd like to see covered on the channel. Also, remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new content. And if you have a specific problem you'd like to discuss with one of our plastics experts, please reach out. Our contact information is in the description box below. We'll see you in the next video.